Hey, good morning, Programming 11. Check out how we're going to do our clear, our new button, our save button, and our load button. Again, you don't have to do the save and load, that's totally optional, but we'll take a look at the new button to start off with. Uh, basically, you know, if we wanted to clear the screen, here's an ugly drawing, and I want to click new and get rid of it. Uh, the idea here is basically I just, um, if I, this is in the uh, mouse released function. I'm just taking a look at, uh, hey, did uh, my mouse click the new button? And those are the numbers for the new button. And if they did, I just clear the background using background. It just covers everything. You'll see that it does a bit of a flash because uh, it covers even the toolbar. So if I click new, you can see like the whole thing flashes. And that's not amazing, but it's, it's OK. And um, you can solve that by instead of doing background, you can replace it with a rect that is the exact position and size of your canvas. Uh, you just have to make sure the fill color and the um, stroke color are the canvas color and then you're good to go. So you can either do it this way or draw a rect in the canvas space. So that's all it is for the new button. Really not much, many lines of code at all for that. Uh, for the save button, it's a lot more complicated and so this is where it's optional. Please don't feel like you need to do it if you are uh, short for time, um, that's totally fine. So the deal with the save button, here's how it's going to look. Uh, I'm going to draw a picture. I will draw a happy face. And uh, I'm going to stop there, I think. Got, got some hair, ears. Okay, we're good to go. This is a masterpiece. I want to save this. So I'll click save. And here's what's going to happen. It's going to bring up a uh, place to save so I can save this as a particular file name. I'll save it as uh, picture.png uh, or it could be jpg. You could type in whatever extension you want, but do include an extension and click save and then you'll notice that it does in fact save. So I'll open up the data folder and there it is, it saved. Uh, unfortunately because I designed my interface uh, poorly, so does the button for the uh, for the, the stamp tool, and there's not an easy way to get rid of that. So you know, like I said, you probably shouldn't design it that way, um, but um, that's pretty easy to solve. I could just move this down. So um, how did that work? I'll show you the code. So to start off with, uh, let's go to. Um, first of all, the save button is nothing special. It's just a rectangle and I have the word save written on it. And then if we were to look at the, this is in the mouse release function for my save button, uh, check it, oops, sorry, check it out. It's a little bit funny in that we have this new thing called select output. Sorry, my magnifier wasn't ready to go. Here we go. So this is the if statement to say, hey, am I clicking on that rectangle? That's the save button. And then it calls the select output function. So select output basically is what opens that file selection window. Um, there's two arguments. I'll zoom out a bit so you can see it better. The first argument is going to be in double quotes, and it's going to be the name of uh, just a sentence or a message that will be put at the top of that new window that comes up. So I said choose a name for your new image file because you're saving a picture. And then the second is the name of a function that you are going to write inside of your program. So I call it save image. So somewhere I have to make a new function definition called save image, and that's the function that's going to handle the uh, file that I select. It's going to actually do the output. So save image is down here. It has to have a parameter to accept the file that I choose. Um, so you know, f is just a generic name for that file. It's a type file, and then I first have to check to make sure it's not null. The reason, or what that means, null, means it doesn't exist. So why might it not exist? Well, the person might have pressed cancel and didn't choose to, to save the image after all. And if I don't put in that, then it's going to crash my program because it's going to be like, ah, the file doesn't exist. And you know, I have to basically, um, this is just programs it to, to not uh, do anything if, it, if the person pressed cancel. This symbol, by the way, means not equal to, so if f the file is not equal to null. It's just another way of saying, hey, if it doesn't exist, which is another way of us saying if the user pressed cancel and didn't actually want to save. 
So if the user didn't press cancel and they actually selected a file, uh, then I use the get function to grab it and I can give it coordinates just like a rectangle. This is x, y, width, and height. Uh, the word width here refers to the width of the screen and the word height refers to the height of the screen uh, of the, the window I put in there. Uh, I could replace these numbers with whatever I put in for size, um, but I guess I was lazy and just decided to use width and height. So um, so that's fine. And then I say, uh, the output of the get function is actually an image, so I can save that in the p, a, a new pimage variable. I just called it canvas. And then pimages actually have the ability to save themselves to a file. So canvas.save is the function there. And f.getAbsolutePath is kind of a mouthful, but basically that's saying, like, you know, wherever the person selected in that file selection window, uh, save there. That's the one we want because uh, that information gets passed to us in this f parameter, this file thing, and um, we can just be like, cool, so, uh, you chose to save on the desktop, great, it would say that here. If they chose to save in the data folder, then they would say that here. Um, so we'll just save to it. And you can see it works pretty good. So, awesome. Uh, <laughs> again, this is absolutely optional, and feel free to, you know, <laughs> uh, to do it if you want to try it out. So the next thing is going to be loading. So here's my load button. It's very similar uh, in, on, on this side of it. So this is in the mouse released function. And notice how like here for the save button it was select output. Well for the load button it's select input. And select input is very similar. You first give a, in double quotes uh, uh, argument that is the name that's going to be on top of the file selection window and then you give it the name of the function that's going to handle that file. So let's just see how that works. In the program, I can click load, and we'll load a picture, and you can see there's the pick an image to load shows up here, and I can load, and it loads up the picture, and I can now edit it and stuff. I can put the happy face on this guy. Woo! <laughs> I kind of like that, actually. Um, so anyways, that's uh, select, the difference between select input and output is select input is for bringing a file into the sketch and select output is for exporting a file out of the sketch. So we want select input for the load and then what does load look like? It looks a little bit ugly, not gonna lie. Um, we have this kludge here to deal with things uh, but open image is kinda similar to save image in that it takes a file parameter uh, or you need to make a file parameter and then we've got the f is not null again just in case the person presses cancel and then we get some ugly stuff. This is the core of it right here. I wish we could just do this. This would be nice. Um, it's very similar to this, except that in, instead of getting, we're loading the image that the person selected, and then we're drawing it to the screen. And I draw it at 0, 0. Maybe that's not the best place to draw it. You can sort of rearrange this. Uh, but then we have this while thing around it. So the issue is that this doesn't work the first time. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have the while loop, it'll go to load it, and it won't work uh, the first time. Pardon me. And so this while loop makes it try again and again. You might need to change this number, even like to like a hundred or something, uh, depending on the speed of your machine. So, and, and other factors. So you might want to just up this number right now. But the idea is that um, it's gonna this while loop makes it try a hundred times, uh, and so this is sort of this and this are the parts of the while loop. Uh, and we're going to be covering while loops in more detail later on. So again, this is just sort of an extra sneak peek, uh, fun thing to try out if you're if you're good to go on that. So that's um, so that's how it loads it. It just does loads from file just like we do when we draw the stamp picture or anything, and then draws it onto the screen. And the while loop gets around the fact that um, the processing doesn't wait for you to click the button to load the picture for some reason so you have to like do this while loop to to delay it to make it um, take a little bit longer so it doesn't skip over it so I don't know it's not great <laughs> it's pretty ugly actually um, and you know you might be able to get away with a smaller number but 100 probably will do it there it is you can see it's like you can see as it's like flashing 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 it's like loading it over and over and over again um, so for a small image like this it's probably not a big deal uh, but you know, for a larger image, it's um, you know something you can do. So um, that's that's where I'll end it. Uh, I feel like there's a there's probably a better solution for this, but we can get to it later. Uh, so it's, if you like this, then give it a shot, and you can build it into your own um, code. Uh, you can even play with this as well. You could 
resize the image that you load. You could center it, doing some math to choose better coordinates. You know, you can do all sorts of uh, interesting things with um, with this code. So again, that's um, uh, optional things you can try out uh, to have some fun with uh, with the project. Okay, well, thanks very much, Programming Eleven. I hope you have a great time uh, finishing this project, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.